I've put on my painting shirt because it's time to create art. <laughs> Greetings peeps, Mitch Hightower here with you, coming to you from San Francisco, California. And today, as you can see, I'm out here in the garage. Why am I out here in the garage? Well, I've got a painting project coming up and I'm going to show you every detail how to make this happen. So today I'm going to utilize a pour painting technique known as a Dutch pour. And this cool technique involves a blow dryer. And we'll get to this part a little bit later. But first, let's talk about the materials involved in creating this piece of art. Obviously for a painting, we're going to need a canvas. And as you can see, this canvas is nice and thick and this is what's called gallery wrap. Let me show you this on the close-up cam. Yes, in fact, we do have a close-up cam in the garage today. It's right down here below the main cam. So let me show you this. Here's the canvas. This is a 12 inch wide by 24 inch long canvas. Of course, you could also utilize it this way as well. And as you can see, this is has the canvas wrapped all the way around the edge and then it folds into the frame in the back. So when the raw canvas is on the edge like this, that's called a gallery wrap. And the reason for that is that oftentimes contemporary artists will paint the sides of the canvases as well, and that becomes part of the artwork. And that way you can have a more contemporary look when it's hung because you do not need a frame. That also saves on the expense because as you know, if you framed art, framing can be very, very costly. I happen to like it because I prefer the sort of art gallery kind of look that you get when you have frameless paintings. And if the sides of the canvas are finished nicely, who needs a frame? So, okay, just FYI, this canvas, all the paints and all the paint supplies I'm going to show you today, I purchased on Amazon.com. This particular canvas, I put a link in the description below where you can go right to Amazon where I purchased these canvases. They come, this particular size comes in a pack of three. And I really like this brand uh, because I think it's a nice sturdy canvas and it takes the paint really well. I know that because I've done many paintings in the past. So if you're just getting started with paintings, you might want to experiment with different canvases. The price points of the canvases really do make a difference in the quality, not only of the canvas itself, but how your painting is going to look when it when it's finished. So if you're just getting started, when I started, I used very inexpensive canvas because I wanted to have an opportunity to practice without wasting really expensive canvases like this. Uh, this particular canvas came in a three pack and it was approximately $75. So that means these are about $25 a piece. And I think that's pretty reasonable. And this is a very nice quality canvas. So that's it for our canvas. We're going to have to take this plastic off before we get started, obviously, but I'll come back to that in just a moment. So the next important thing for creating a painting is of course the paint. So I have here several different bottles of paint. I'm going to show you this one in the close-up cam. This is Apple Barrel paint. This is just their standard acrylic craft paint and this color is Caribbean. And I really like this blue. It's not quite turquoise. It's not quite aqua. It's a really lovely shade and I think it's going to go nicely with the rest of the colors I've chosen for this piece today. So now our other paint is all from a kit. This is from a brand called Sargent. Let me show you this on the close-up cam right down here. Now this particular color is peach and I bought these colors all in a set. It was a set of 12 different colors. That can be a very economical way to purchase paint because if you've painted before, you know that paint can be expensive. And when you do acrylic pouring techniques, such as the one I'm going to show you today, you often use a very large amount of paint. So getting paint economically can be a big plus. So that's where this came from, a set of 12, and the link to that set of 12 colors is right below in the description with all the other supplies I'm using today. So this is a peach color. I'm gonna use that for the background along with this black, and this is called Ivory Black. This is also another Sargent product from the same set that the peach paint came from. Let me show you on the close-up cam. This is just really intense dark black, exactly what we're looking for. And another color I'm using today is this lovely spectral orange. Let me show you this in the close-up cam. This is a very bright, intense shade of orange, and it's exactly what I was looking for. Now, right about now, you might be wondering, spectral orange, what does spectral mean? And spectral just refers to colors that are created 
from a single prism of light. So basically this is just the orangest of the orange that you're going to find is what that really means. Spectral can also refer to monochromatic and several other different things. And spectral, when it doesn't have to do with paint, means ghostly. <laughs> uh, that doesn't really have to do anything to do with this paint. But as you can see, let me show you once again on the close-up cam, the back of the bottle. This is a very intense shade of orange. And spectral colors are very intense shades of whatever color they actually are. This kit also came, or this set of paints, I should say, also came with spectral green and spectral blue, and they're very intense shades of blue and green, just like this orange is very intense. So if you're looking for intense, high pigmented paint, spectral colors will give you the result that you're looking for. So we've got the orange, and then we have a metallic today as well. I'll show you this in the close-up cam right down here. This is copper. This is a brand called Deco Art, and this particular line of Deco Art paint is called Extreme Sheen. These are highly metallic, highly reflective paints, and they're really super cool. They create really cool effects when you do pore painting techniques. And so I'm gonna use this copper because I wanna just introduce a little bit of metallic to the other colors of paint that we have. So for today, I only have five different colors of paint. I've actually selected this color scheme because Philip said he wanted something that was sort of turquoise and orange and copper to go with some of the elements that we have decorating our living room upstairs. So that's what's going on with the paint. Now, the other important element here is this product. This is called Floatrol. Let me show you this bottle on the close-up cam right down here. Flood Floatrol. Now, this particular paint additive is widely used by painters that do house type of painting and it can be used in the interior or the exterior and it's also hugely popular with people who like to do poor paintings like me and the reason for this is this is just a uh, basically a transparent product that looks white when it's still liquid and it helps extend your paint. What else it does is it helps thin it down because some of these heavily pigmented acrylic colors, the paint can be very thick and doesn't lend itself to pouring very well. So by adding the Floatrol, you'll get a nice consistency of paint that's reasonably easy to pour. Now, one of the things I often notice when I watch other artists creating pour paintings on videos is that the sexy part comes when you start pouring the paint on the canvas and manipulating the paint until you get your final results. But they often leave out the details of, well, how did we get the paint that we're pouring on the canvas? What are the ratios of paint to Floatrol? Things like that. So as a general rule, what I operate out of is you want to use one part paint to four parts Floatrol. That's a basic mixture. Now, another thing that you can do is to determine that you've got your paint mixed correctly, I've already mixed up the peach here before we started taping today. This is still a little on the thick side, but let me show you on the close-up cam. You want it to be able to run back off of your stir stick. So sort of the consistency of slightly warmed honey, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, some artists may prefer their paint to be a little thicker or a little thinner, depending on the techniques that you're going to ploy to apply the paint to the canvas as well as manipulate the paint once it's on the canvas. So I think this, what consistency I've got here, let me show you that one more time on the close-up cam. It just easily drips off the stir stick. That's just about what I'm looking for. And so that's the benefit that the flow of Toral gives you is it helps extend the paint and it thins it down enough to make it more workable and so you can, you know, tip and turn the canvas, or in this case today, I'm going to use the blow dryer to move the paint around the canvas. So that's just the basic mixture. If you find sometimes with really intensely pigmented colors like black or really dark blue or really intense purple, you'll find that you need to use more Floatrol because the more pigment the paint has, the thicker the consistency of it will be. So you can start out with the four to one ratio, and if that's not thin enough for your purposes, of course, you can always Always add more Floatrol. Now there are other additives that you can use including water to thin down your paint. I've tried thinning the paint with water as an experiment a few times and I'm not crazy about the results that I get because the, it tends to create um, uh, 
let's more transparency through the paint and I like paint for this purpose to be as opaque as possible so that's why I'm using the Floetrol it's a little more expensive than using water but I think it's worth it and once again the Floetrol the link to the Floetrol is also down in the description so you can order the Floetrol and have it delivered right to your front door just like I did okay other supplies we're using today I have paint measuring cups and these have uh, marks on the side that tell you uh, measurements so you can pour in accurately and get your mixes going on. I also have just some popsicle sticks. Let me show you in the close-up cam. These I've used many times. I reuse these all the time. And these I just use to stir the paint. So in addition to that, I also have a palette knife. Let me show you on the close-up cam. This is just a standard palette knife and I'm going to use this towards the end of our painting project in order to scrape the excess off the bottom of the canvas as the paint drips over the sides. So you may hear from time to time since I'm working in the garage there is some traffic. We live on a very busy street if you haven't seen our house tour video where we showed the busy street that we live on. So you're going to hear some traffic in the background today and we're just going to have to live with that. So anyway uh, it's very busy around here especially during commute times and also in the midday when it's getting close to lunch like it is right now. So anyway enough about the traffic outside if you hear cars going by that's what's going on today while I'm out here working in the garage. So as you can see I've already mixed up several of the colors that I'm going to use today but I saved doing this spectral orange until we were here on camera so you could see exactly how this is done. Like I mentioned earlier a lot of painting videos start with the paint already mixed and then just show you what they do to apply the paint to the canvas and I love watching those videos. Meanwhile it leaves out the part where you actually are mixing up the paint which is critical to having a successful painting outcome. And I also noticed that some people in their painting video descriptions specifically call out that they do not give away their painting mixtures because their formulas are secret. Well I'm not really into secret formulas myself. That's that's why I share recipes and directions and all kinds of different things here on our YouTube channel because I want you to be able to benefit from the experience I have in these kind of projects. So here we go. We're going to mix up some spectral orange paint right now and we're not going to need too much for this project so I'm going to use one of these smaller cups and let's go down here on the close-up cam. I'm going to move these other paints out of the way so I can set this down so you can get a closer look at it. So let's put our little cup right there. Let's get the lid off of this beautiful orange. Oh, this color is lovely. So let's go down to the close-up cam and I'll put a little bit of paint in here. I'm just going to put a big, well not quite, a small dollop. I'd say this is probably half a teaspoon of paint. And now I'm going to go in and add the Floetrol and then stir all of this together. So we want to make sure when you use the Floetrol that you shake it up really thoroughly because this tends to separate even in the few minutes since earlier when I mixed these other colors, this will start separating. So you always want to shake it really, really, really well before you pour any out of the bottle. Okay, so now I've got this filled up, let me show you on the close-up cam, to just about the first line on the cup. And I'm going to fill up this little cup the rest of the way, let me see if I can get this so you can see it, with the Floetrol. There you can see this is a white liquid. It looks very much like Elmer's glue all. Anyway, okay, so now we've got that done. Let's get a stir stick and the next thing I'm going to do is just stir and stir and stir and stir and stir. So I'm going to stir this, get the orange up from the bottom of the cup and stir this together until the Floetrol and the orange, spectral orange paint are very, very thoroughly mixed together. There we go, we're starting to get something going on here. This color is starting to look good. Okay, that is awesome. Let me hold this up a little bit closer to the camera so you can take a look. This is a lovely shade of orange. I've seen car paint this color, it's called competition orange. It's very intense shade of orange. I love it. Okay, that looks good. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long, but you do wanna make sure you really, really thoroughly mix the Floetrol and the acrylic paint together. There we go. Okay, that looks good. All right, now with the mixing of the orange paint, I have all of our paints ready to go. So now we're ready to set up for our pouring portion. And 
The first thing I need to do is take the plastic off of this canvas so we can paint. So let me get this off. There we go. We're just gonna pop this plastic right off. I like to leave the canvases wrapped until right before I'm ready to use them so nothing happens to them before I get a chance to paint on them. So let's put that in the garbage now. As you can see, this is just a lovely white canvas. One other thing that's really critical that I want to do is I want to be able to lift this canvas off the surface of the boards that are going across my sawhorses creating our work area today. And the reason for that is when the paint runs over the side, I don't want it to build up along the side and create unsightly messes all along the side of our canvas. If the canvas is raised up off the surface, then the paint will just drip off. That's what I'm going for. So what are we going to do to raise the canvas up off the work surface? That's what's in this little cup. Let me show you these. Now these have paint all over them because I've used these many times, but let me show you in the close-up cam right here. These are push pins. And as you can see, they're just really big, oversized push pins. And these are excellent for raising the canvas up off your work surface. Now today I've just got two by fours across a sawhorse. So I don't have a flat work surface except for what I've set up on either side here. So what I want to be sure and do is make sure that the push pins are located in the back of the frame of the canvas. So they'll sit level right on our work surface. So to make sure that's true, I'm just going to tip the canvas on its edge so I can place these push pins in right where it's going to wind up landing to sit situated on these two by fours. And this can be a little challenging to get these in depending on how strong the wood is that the canvas is stretched over. So I just twist these back and forth a few times. Let's see if you can see that on the close up cam. Yes. Okay, and that's all we have to do. We just want to get the push pins affixed in the bottom of the canvas. And I'll put the next one in. Okay, we just push these right on in. There we go, that's working out pretty good. I wanna come back here and see if I can get this one in a little bit further. All right, now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. Let's see, I wanna make sure this is lined up correctly. There we go, that looks pretty good. Okay, and now we're gonna just press these right in to the frame that's stretching the canvas. Okay, one more push pin to go. Let's get this in. Let's see, there's a knot right here, of course, where I need to push the pin. So I'm going to go slightly to the side of where that is because trying to push these pins into a knot in the wood is practically impossible. So there we go. All right, that looks pretty good. So let me show you on the close up cam. I've got the push pins placed here. So now when I set this down, it is elevated up off the top of my work surface. And that's exactly the result that I'm looking for by using these push pins. There are a variety of ways you could use these cups and just set the canvas on them. I found in the past though, I want something that's really affixed to the canvas. When I just used to set things like on top of cups, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes you can bump the canvas or when you're working with the blow dryer, the canvas will move and you definitely don't want a canvas full of paint falling off your work surface and making a mess all over the floor and ruining your canvas. So I think this method works pretty good. Hopefully this canvas will stay in place throughout the entire time we're working on this painting. Now, you also may have noticed I have my painting shirt on today. The last time I did a painting video, if you saw it, you may recall, I wore an all white long sleeve shirt. I'm not sure exactly why I did that, except for that I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could do a whole painting and actually not make a mess and get it on me. And I was almost successful. I got a little black paint on my wrist, but other than that, I did okay. But today, using the blow dryer technique, I don't wanna to have to worry about getting paint on my clothes. So I'm wearing my painting clothes that are already wrecked. So if I get more paint on it, it'll just be another story to tell whenever I wear this paint shirt. Okay, so now it is finally time, woohoo, to get started on our painting. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna apply the two colors that are gonna be our primary background colors. And I actually have sort of a plan of how I'm going to execute this. I want a diagonal towards this side of the canvas to be black and I want a diagonal on this other end of the canvas to be the peach color. That's why I've mixed up 
so much more of these two colors than I did of the other bright colors. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with those once we get the peach and the black on. So, hey, now it's time to pour some paint. Woo, woo, woo. Let's go. Okay, so I've got this lovely black paint right here, and I'm just going to start filling in this area of the canvas over here. So let's take a look at that. Ooh, I love pouring paint. This is so much fun. So I'm going to pour all this out. There we go. Now that may not be quite enough. I do have, as you notice, more than one cup of black because it tends to take a lot. And I also like to use the stir stick and scrape as much paint out of my mixing container as possible. So this expensive paint winds up on the canvas rather than in the garbage can. So one of the things you want to be careful of when you're cleaning up after this is not washing this type of paint down the sink. It can be very damaging to the plumbing and create clogs. And we definitely don't want to have a plumbing problem just because we did an art project. So I'm going to make sure and clean these out without letting any of this paint go down the sink if I can possibly do that. Okay. So there's our first container of black. I'm going to add a little bit more black because I don't think this is really quite enough to fill out this whole area. So let's go in here with a little bit more black. Get some over here over the top. We want to get very close to the edge because this paint is going to eventually wind up running down over the edge of all four sides of the canvas. Okay, now we've got the peach paint and I'm going to basically do exactly the same thing with the peach that I did with the black. So let's go ahead and add some of this to the other side of the canvas. Ooh, this looks good. This is a very peachy, light, light orange shade of paint. Okay, and now I also want to make sure I use the stir stick and scrape out as much paint from the sides and the bottom of this paint container as I possibly can. That looks looking pretty good. There's quite a bit of paint still left in here, so let's get out as much of it as we can. Okay. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. There we go. Okay. So our peach paint is now in place. Now, the next thing I want to do is move this paint around the canvas a little bit, and I'm going to employ the palette knife to make that happen. So let's go down to the close-up cam and I'll show you. I'm just going to spread the paint around all the way out to the edges. And it doesn't need to be particularly even because it'll even out as we work the paint. I want to make sure I get it all the way to the edge of the canvas. And I mixed into the black a little bit, so I want to clean the palette knife off because I don't really want a lot of the black and the peach color mixing together at this point, though I did drip some right here. We'll work with that as we go along. So I'm going to push some of this paint out to the edge of the canvas and it's going to start dripping off the edge, which is fine because that's what we want. We want the sides of the canvas to be covered as well as the entire top, obviously. So I'm just going to take the palette knife and I'm going to spread some of this paint out along all over the sides of the canvas. There we go. That's looking pretty good so far. Now you also want to pay special attention to the canvas at the corners because the corners are folded over themselves and sometimes it's hard for the paint to just run down the sides. So I like to go in with the palette knife and make sure that these corners are really well coated with the paint. Okay, so let's make sure. I'm gonna peek over here, over the front of this. I wanna make sure that this peach paint runs way down over the front of this canvas. So we don't want any of the white canvas to show through once we're finished. Okay. That's looking pretty good. That looks pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Now I've got a little bit more I need to do up here on this side. So let's go in here and get this other side happening. Now, while you're working on this, I, I like to mix my paint right before I'm actually painting. 
I've read some other artists talk about that they mix their paint the day before and let it rest overnight. I haven't found the need to do that. I'm not sure how that benefits anything and I've never heard an explanation that made very much sense to me. So I mix my paint right before I want to use it. There we go. Okay, now I have used the palette knife to move the paint, the peach paint all around and to get it to be uh, on the sides of the canvas. And now I need to get all this peach paint off this palette knife so we can move on to the black. Okay, so let me clean this off really good. At this point, I'm trying to keep the peach and the black from running into each other, though as we move along with this project, they are going to blend together. Right now, though, I want to keep them separate. So let's use this palette knife and move the black paint around. I want to bring this paint all the way to the edge so I can get right over the edge like this. That's looking pretty good. Now we want to pay special attention to the corners, like I said before, because the paint may not run down into the corners of the canvas where it's folded over itself. So we're going to give it a little bit of help by using the palette knife. Okay. Pretty good. Okay. Now we're finally getting somewhere. All right. That's looking pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna go up here and I want this paint to also run over the top of the canvas, which is facing me that you can't see, but I need to make sure I get good coverage all over the sides of this canvas. So let's work this paint out all the way up here to the top. There we go, and I'm paying special attention once again to the corners because we do not want any blank spots. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, we're getting somewhere now. Okay, now there's a little bit of peach paint in this black. I'm gonna sort of push it off the canvas because I really don't want peach right in the middle of the black itself. Okay, so there we go. Now I need to move this paint around over here just to get this all a little bit closer together. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That's starting to look really good. All right. So at this point, I have the black and the peach reasonably evenly spread around the canvas. Okay, that's looking pretty darn good. All right, I think we're gonna call that portion complete. Okay, so at this point, we've got this lovely black and this lovely peach all spread out for our background colors. And I'm gonna take my cell phone and take a picture of this so I can document how this is in a photograph as we go along. So right here, let's snap a picture of this so we can see how this was looking in case we need to refer back to it later or I might piece it into this video. We'll see how that goes. Ooh. Ah. Okay, so our background colors are in place. Now we're ready to add our pretty, pretty colors. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put down the blue first, then the copper, and then the orange. So let's go in with this lovely peacock blue. I'm gonna start right here and just start pouring in paint right along where the two background colors meet each other. Okay, we're just gonna let that go in there like that. Now I'm going to add the copper next, and I'm just gonna go along the same line that I created with the blue. And I'm sort of just going irregularly down either side of the blue rather than just right down the middle of it. Some copper dripped over here in the peach. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's go in here with this spectral orange. Ooh, this looks really cool. Okay, so at this point, I think I'm also going to go back in and I'm going to add some more blue on top of these other colors. Let's get in here. Pour this. We're going to just zigzag it. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go in with just a little bit more of this copper right here on the top. Just going to go back and forth a couple of times right there. All righty. And then I'm going to add a little tiny bit more orange on top of all of that. So let's go in here with this orange again. Okay, there we go. 
All right, so as you can see at this point, we have the two background colors, the peach and the black in place, and then our peacock, our spectral orange, and our copper metallic running right down the center. So here is the moment that we've all been waiting for. We're going to get out the blow dryer. Now, what's the procedure for doing this Dutch pour using the blow dryer? First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the blow dryer to just move the paint a little bit, the background paint is what I mean, the black paint and the peach paint a little bit over the top of the stripes I've poured. And then we're gonna go back and pour, or excuse me, use the blow dryer to move the paint that are the stripes, the peacock, the orange, and the copper, out into the peach and black background. So let's get started with that. Now today I'm using my housemate's blow dryer. Don't tell him I brought it out here. Anyway, this is, I don't have a blow dryer, so this is the only blow dryer we have in the house and I've outfitted it with this. Let me show you on the close-up cam with this little gizmo that helps direct the air in a more concentrated space. And I have this set to the coolest setting because we do not need heat to move the paint around. We just need a strong flow of air. So I have the blow dryer set to cool, but I have, I'm going to set the uh, actual amount of air that's forced through it to the highest setting. And so we're gonna be ready, let's see, yeah. Okay, that should work, let's see. That ought to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the blow dryer on again and I'm gonna start moving this paint around. So let's get going with that. Okay, I'm gonna go right in here. As you can see, the paint moves. Let me turn this off. You can see there that the paint moved around very easily. I'm gonna keep the blow dryer from getting in the paint itself as much as I possibly can. So let's go in and push the peach paint back over everything that we just moved around as well. Okay, we're gonna go in here like this and we're gonna move the peach paint in just a little bit. Okay, let me turn this off again. Okay, so now we've got most of the bright colors I added to the center all covered up. So now's the time for the big reveal. So let's go in here with the blow dryer and I'm gonna just push all this paint around and hopefully create some very interesting effects. Let's go for it. Okay, here we go. Okay, not bad. As you can see, that made a great big mess. So I'm gonna have a little bit of cleanup to do here. No worries though. I did get a little paint on the floor, even though I put uh, coverings on the floor, as in drop cloths, there's still a little bit of paint mess going on here, but we'll worry about cleaning all that up a little bit later. Okay, so what's going on here? Let's take a look at this. How have we done here? I think this looks pretty cool. All right, now I wanna to touch up a couple of areas here. In the peach, there's a little, few little spots of black that I'm not exactly thrilled with. So let's go in here and smooth this out a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now, I wanna go in now and I'm gonna use the palette knife. And let me show you here at the front so you can see. I'm going to use this because the paint's dripping down the side. So I'm gonna use this and just scrape it across the bottom and that will help remove some of the excess paint that's dripping off the bottom of the canvas. Now I'm going to be sure and go and do that down the sides of around the entire canvas and make sure I remove all the excess paint that's dripping off the bottom of the canvas itself. Okay, there we go. Now let's go this way. Just run the palette knife right along the bottom edge of the canvas in order to get the excess paint to drip off onto the drop cloth. Okay, so far, so good. I only got a few dots of paint on my boots down here on the floor. So not bad, really, okay. So as you can see, ta-da, this is 
a Dutch pour. And that's because we use the blow dryer to move the paint around. That's what that technique is called when you use the blow dryer with acrylic pouring is a Dutch pour. So this is our result. I'm gonna take out my camera, or excuse me, my phone, and snap a picture of this real quick. So I'm gonna probably piece this in the video right about here. Ooh. Ah. Okay, so there you have it. That is what it takes to do a Dutch pour on a canvas. Voila. Okay, now this is gonna have to dry for several days. It happens to be a little chilly here in San Francisco, and by chilly I mean it's like the low 50s during the daytime. And so this will take a little while to completely dry out. A little while, meaning probably three or four days at least. And then once that happens, we'll have a look. I'll probably do a finish coat. And a finish coat would be a clear, transparent varnish over the top to help protect your paint. And clear varnishes also can have a UV component, which means that it'll protect them from sunlight because some of these paints can fade if exposed to sunlight or UV light extensively. So one of the things you want to make sure and do when you hang your acrylic artwork is not use light bulbs that are UV based like halogens because that will fade your paint. So if you use LED bulbs to light your painting, you won't have to worry about that. Just a little tip about long-term care for your painted artwork. So we're going to let this dry out thoroughly and I'll be back in a few days, but actually it'll just be in a minute according to this video. And I will show you this finished product once it's all dry and hung on the wall. Okay, I'm back again, and as you can see, the canvas is blank. What happened? Well, after I turned the camera off, I had a look at this, and I realized that hated it. I just have to say I was not thrilled with how this peach color looks. I think it's actually like, you know, the color of organ meat, and I just did not care for that look at all. And I also was not happy with how I used the blow dryer to uh, move the paint around the canvas. The look itself wasn't like what I've experienced when I've done this technique in the past, and I just didn't like it. The other problem I noticed is this canvas for some reason, and I've never had this problem before with these nice canvases, right along where the frame is, the weight of the paint made the canvas sink into the center. So a lot of the paint started migrating back towards the center of the canvas and changed the look as the painting sat here. So I just had to decide that I didn't like it. So for the first time, I've been painting since I first took painting lessons when I was an eight-year-old boy, and in all those decades, never once did I scrape the paint off the canvas and start over again until today. So as you can see, I've cleaned up this canvas as best I can. It's gonna have to dry out for a couple of days before I can try to paint on it again. So we'll come back and see if we can make this project a go. But for now, I guess I'm gonna have to finally have a video that's called Epic Fail! Because this looked terrible and I don't want to sign my name on it. So I've got the canvas cleaned off. I'm going to come up with another color combination and I'll be back in the not too distant future and we'll try this technique one more time. Okay, so thanks so much for being patient today while this unfolded. The techniques I showed you actually can work. They just didn't today. <laughs> and mostly because I just didn't like the outcome. There were a few little technical issues with this canvas sort of being overstretched and sinking down in the center from the weight of the paint. Like I say, that's a problem I have not experienced before. And I've used these same canvases many times. So we'll try again and see what happens. Meanwhile, I'm going to come up with another plan for mixing some cool colors of paint, and I'll see you again soon. So thanks so much for joining me today, everyone. I'm sorry I don't have a lovely finished result to show you. We'll be back soon, and we'll try this again. Ciao!